ask any group of people what organization is most responsible for revolutionary advances in space technology, and there is little doubt their answer would be NASA. Clearly, over its long history, NASA has been one of the most innovative and exciting change agents the world has ever seen, proving that we can accomplish great things if only given a goal and the opportunity. That feeling has been firmly imprinted on the NASA DNA and continues to motivate all those who push the envelope of technology. But rather than just rest on its laurels, NASA is moving to expand its role as a change agent in new and exciting ways. In order to do this, the NASA culture will need some minor tweaking first. Today's generation of NASA researchers are working to alter some outmoded practices of how technologies are developed and implemented at NASA. If these ideas take root, they have the potential to revolutionize NASA from the inside out. Coming up on this episode of NASA X, we will follow members of Space Technology's game-changing development program office as they work to revolutionize and mature new technologies within NASA. We will feature a few of the many technologies managed by the GCDP to see how these innovative ideas are advancing the missions of today and missions of the future as well. NASA has a long and storied past. In its short history, the agency has accomplished truly breathtaking achievements, forever changing how humans view themselves in the universe. The NASA of today is no different than the one of the past, of course. It is still the world leader in space technology and is still accomplishing truly unbelievable feats. But many in the NASA community have seen the pace of technological breakthroughs slow in recent years. That was not always the case. In NASA's early years, it seemed like many of its projects were stuck in fast forward, none more so than the Apollo program. President Kennedy made his famous Man on the Moon speech at Rice University in 1962. And by July of 1969, Neil Armstrong was stepping out of the lander onto the surface of the moon. One reason we got there so quickly was because NASA made the decision early on to let the engineers lead the charge toward the moon, rather than the norm which was to have a more bureaucratic structure. That is not to say there was not structure. There was just an understanding that more risk must be taken in order to complete the mission in the given timeline. But as the Apollo program retired and the shuttle came online, a shift began. The culture within NASA became much more risk averse and rightly more focused on safety and successful missions. But with this new posture, less focus went into the development of transformative technologies. This mindset permeated throughout NASA and eventually, in the words of one NASA official, NASA became more evolutionary and less revolutionary. NASA never stopped innovating but researchers developing new technologies often found substantial hurdles in their way. To better understand this, let's look at what NASA calls TRLs, or Technology Readiness Levels. The nine TRLs measure the maturity of evolving technologies and order them from one, which is the lowest, to nine, which is a technology that is fully developed. An example from history of how the TRL system works can be seen in the late 1950s, when the famed NASA engineer Max Faget came up with an idea for the Mercury spacecraft. Dr. Faget was sitting in the cafeteria at NASA Langley drawing on a napkin when he came up with the idea for the basic shape of the Mercury capsule. He fleshed out the details with his team, and soon they had the beginnings of the craft which put them at technology readiness level one for the Mercury project. He and his team then began moving through the other levels, testing and building models, and after a few years, arrived at TRL-9, which culminated with the first manned flight of the vehicle on May 5th, 1961. The same basic concept is still used today. Researchers come up with concepts and ideas and hope to move them through the early TRL stages 
all the way to full maturity. This system is the framework from which NASA engineers develop technologies, so it goes without saying that the TRLs are very important within NASA. But in the last few decades, many researchers have come up with great ideas only to find themselves stuck in the lower TRL stages. But in the early 2000s, pushback began happening within the NASA research community. It was widely agreed that there needed to be a way to push important concepts to the front of the line and move them more quickly through the technology readiness level stages. To do this, a sea change needed to happen within NASA, which would completely alter the current culture and get us back to our leaner, engineer-leads-the-way mentality. That sea change happened when NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate created the GCDP, or the Game Changing Development Program Office. Space Technology developed the GCDP with the idea that new, exciting, disruptive technologies would be rapidly infused and given the chance to prove themselves more quickly. If you look at the Space Technology Program, especially if you look at the Game Changing Program within, our projects are about two years long with an option to extend them for a third year. So basically we are carrying on executing our existing uh, portfolio and by the end of the year we will develop dozens of new technologies that we can make available to other uh, programs within space technology, other stakeholders such as uh, human explorations under the AES project or maybe we can pass on technologies uh, to uh, science mission directorate as well. Um, the idea here is to take some more risks and to do some things instead of incrementally but in a trans transformative or disruptive way. Let's look outside of the box, um, let's look for completely different ways of doing technology. And so the idea is that um, we can afford to take risks and target technologies that will hopefully have orders of magnitude improvement that can do things that we've never